So, Darkest Hour Warlock. Whenever I face Darkest Hour Warlock, bad things happen to me. Uh, my opponent always gets the combo super early. But in this case, we were able to hold our own against the Warlock and reduce his health total down significantly. And in this case, we're actually able to put him down to one health, which would be amazing. Um, not sure if I should have played the mech first, then attacked, just to get the armor. But he's at one health. And of course, reform scheme into Darkest Hour. And there go our hopes of winning this game. Just like that. One health. Feels bad. But look, we have a recovery mechanic in our hand. We have Brawl. So, in the ideal world, we're able to kill off his big threats. And that's exactly what happens. Okay, things are going our way. We have Batterhead, and we can actually clear his board next turn with Batterhead, and then charge with Corcoran Elite the following turn and win the game. That's the plan. From the but of course, anti-magic shell, the card that he needed to buff up his board, which now makes Batterhead useless. And at this juncture you realise there is no hope, no chance of us winning this game. Uh, we only run one copy of Brawl. If we'd had a second copy here, and if there were no other demons in hand, um, maybe we could brawl and then win with Corcoran Elite. So maybe second copy of Brawl would be ideal. That's something that I'd need to ask the deck author about. And uh, you notice that our Rhino actually didn't draw us a card from our deck. It was really sad. But yeah, this is just game over. I mean, good job on his part, right? He managed to survive from one health and make a comeback. That's pretty epic. Okay, so what deck are we playing today? We are playing Beardy Man's Hulk Gone Wild Rush Warrior deck. Um, I've played this deck before. This is the latest version. Beardy Man does a great job of constantly tweaking his decks, uh, retesting them, and then releasing them uh, for play in whatever the new meta is. So thank you to Beardy Man for this deck. As always, very creative, very innovative, different to anything that's out there on the ladder right now with Warrior. And therefore, you have the surprise factor. I feel that whenever I talk about Beardy Man decks, I talk about the surprise factor. No one expects them. So, uh, what do you do with this deck? Uh, you need to draw Town Crier, uh, play that, draw Rush Minion. Keleseth is pretty good on two to buff up your Rush Minions. You play for board, play for tempo, make favourable trades with your early Rush Minions, like Rabid Worgen, Militia Commander. Um, use Blood Razor if need be against uh, aggressive opponents to clear board. The AoE is really good. Uh, head to the mid game. You've got your War Bears. You've got Fester Hulk, whose attack will start to get buffed up as your other minions attack. Um, move into Akali the Rhino to buff up uh, a Rush minion. And then, of course, my favourite card in the entire deck, Batterhead, which can clear. Uh, can clear an entire opposing board if you're lucky. Um, you can get some pretty cool lethals from this deck with Gromash Hellscream, who goes very well with the uh, the Blood Razor AOE, and Scourge Lord Garish's hero power also going well with Gromash. Uh, the Lich King provides a little bit of extra support as well if you need it. So let's have a look at the deck in action on the wild mode ladder. Please excuse my voice. I have a really bad cold, so my voice may sound worse than usual. So please bear with me. Um, and uh, yeah, we're going to look at um, a selection of different games, proving that this deck can win heading into rank two on the wild mode ladder. Okay, we're starting out against a hunter here, and. Seeing Town Crier in our hand makes me incredibly happy. 
incredibly happy. Because I have a tendency with this deck to draw my 5 drops, my 7 drops, my 8 drops. Um, very rarely do I get a 1 drop. Very rarely, if ever, do I get Keleseth. So, I just have bad luck. But the thing is, even if you're drawing your 5s and your 7s, it's okay. Because you can make a comeback um, with the deck. So, because you, the, the minions you're drawing, a lot of them are rush minions. So, if you're not dead by that point, you can start rushing your opponent's board down uh, and still make that comeback. You have Brawl as well, which is pretty good. And this is a mech hunter um, who's got seemingly a slow start. You'll notice that we have a slow start too. We got our one drop. But there was nothing on two, nothing that we could do on three. Okay, here he goes. Galvanizer into just an Annoitron. Okay, sure. Spirit of the Rhino. Great card. People don't know what it does. They spend 30 seconds mousing over it, saying, what the hell does that card do? Okay, so, wait for him to uh, fill up his board a little bit more before we think about brawling. Next turn could just be a Hulk turn, maybe. I and he's an aggro deck that's taking a really long time to play his turns. What is he thinking about here? Okay, he's thinking about how to trade. That's always good. When an aggro deck thinks about how to trade, it's always good. Magnetic value. Will he trade? He trades! That's really good for me. I'll take that. So this is an awkward turn here. Because my rush minion can't kill. Can't kill anything on this board. But I want to chip away. I could just have played the Hulk, but I don't think that would have done anything. I think the chances of it dying from the two minions on board and something from hand would have been high. At least this play here uh, sets up Spirit of the Rhino in case I draw a rush minion for six. Uh, the trade there weakened one of his minions, which I think is reasonable. And my rush minion didn't lose any health. So I was happy to do that play. Keeping in mind that we still have Brawl in our hand. So... <laughs> and I'm actually going to emote him here. I don't usually emote people. But I'm going to emote him because he's taking so long. Wow. Okay. Really wants to kill Spirit of the Rhino. Interesting. Okay, he's gone really wide on the board. So, the choice is between Brawl, the Hulk, or the Militia Commander. And. I'm not sure about this play, but I want to see how he reacts to the Hulk. Uh, he's already moused over it, so he doesn't know what the hell that card does. He's moused over it a second time. I want to see... Yeah, he's trading. This is good. Because that is a significant investment in terms of trades. Can I help you, sir? And that is damage that is not going to my face. What I'm trying to do is bait out more of a commitment with my brawl. Let me get back. Uh, Jeeves is not what we want to see. So, once again, I'm going to be greedy. And I'm going to wait things out. Did contemplate trading into Jeeves, but actually popping the death rattle there I think was better. It just clears things up with a better brawl. Um, we're still at 27 health. Slit 27 health. 
we're not really that afraid here. Uh, again, just wanting to commit even more stuff to the board. Okay, that's really annoying. Keeping in mind, we only have one Brawl in the deck. So once we've used it, we've used it. There isn't another copy. And there's Battle uh, Ordering misplay there. Should have drawn first. But this is fine. Assume he's going to have to trade the 4 4 in here. Which is good for me. Because it procs the death rattle. Um. And then hopefully next turn, that ahead is going to be a guaranteed board clip. That's the plan. So, how afraid are we of dying? 21 health. We're not really afraid at all. Well played. I'll hurry up. And this commitment to the board is continuing. I can fix anything. More commitment. What we like to see. And uh, he's ignoring the one two. That is going to prove to be a mistake because we get Spirit of the Rhino. And this is now a full board clear. This is so cool. This is so beautiful. So very beautiful. Now, 12 health. We could still be in danger of dying, but we have Zilliax, so that's going to be a little bit of healing. It'll be interesting to see what he's willing to commit. Because he knows that Batterhead is going to be able to deal with most of the low health things that he plays. And he may feel confident that at 28 health, that he can still outlast me. Well played. Unity. Precision. Perfection. Interesting. Trades into the batter head. Okay. Once again, we have a board clear. But we're going to take a lot of damage here. Unity. So I'm going to value Zilliax here for the healing. Okay. Divine Shield intact for Zilliax. And I suspect that... Yeah. He's not going to recover from that. Okay, seven drop, two eight drops. It's not what we want. Ah, and there's one drop. The game must have sensed that I was recording for YouTube. And so my RNG, um, my RNG must have just got better because of that. But I really want to draw my three cost rush minion. 
Never seem to get lucky with that. Now, at the very least, he's going to be overloaded going into next turn. So, one mana to play with. So, it'll be a slow turn for him. But, I need things to be slow for him. Because, as you can see, things are very slow for me, too. No three drop. We have a weapon for four. That's good. So I think this is evidence right here that in the absence of Kelisoth on two, in the absence of a three drop Rabid Worgen Rush minion, you can still recover from turn four against aggressive decks because of your weapon. And now things are going to start to look good for me because we have a selection of five drops to play with. Okay, that's not too bad. I was expecting something a little bit more dangerous from him on turn four. But we just get the Totem Golem, that's fine. The question is, how do we deal with it? Rush the enemy. I like Darius Crowley here. It's mana efficient. And it also means that he can't swing with the weapon to kill it. Yeah, he has to commit a Jade Lightning. That's fine. So, there's options here, and I'm not entirely sure what the correct option is. So I'm going to play Zilliac, just because I can get a trade, I can get some healing, and I can keep the Divine Shield intact. And maybe I should have played Militia Commander and then Hero Powered to use up all of my mana. But Militia Commander with 5 attack I want to keep that for something bigger. Um, and the other option was the Hulk. But I the Hulk wonder. does not get rid of a Spell Power Totem. And I want to get rid of the Spell Power Totem. Okay. This is pretty good for him. Yeah, 4 mana, 7-7. Seven, seven. Unfortunately... My militia commander can't kill it. There's Keliseth. Okay, I want to play Keliseth now. No matter what. Because I want the value. Given the big threats that are going to be coming out of his deck, the plus one, plus one buff from Keliseth could be... Uh, could be massively relevant. Okay. Leaving a 4 mana 7-7 seven, seven on the board, though, doesn't feel great. Because we know it's going to connect face, potentially. Yeah. Yeah, he's not trading into a 2-3. Um, Scourge Lord Garrosh here, really good for me. Unfortunately, the swing with the weapon, plus the trade from the Militia Commander, is not enough to kill the 7-7. So we have to do that. We don't want to be taking another seven to the face. That would be uh, that would be bad for us. Golems are a girl's best friend. But yeah, even shaman doing shaman things. That's going wide on the board, keeping the pressure up. He does not hear a power, which is interesting. Your magic shall not save. You. Playing around brawl, I suppose. Um, branches grow. I think that was a pretty good target there for a silence effect. Not sure if we can get a better target in his deck. Okay. So, now could very well be a good time to brawl, perhaps. 
Although we're we're bat ahead, and bat ahead here this might hurt. is gonna be a board clear. Smash! Because we can clear Smash! all of the two and three health minions, and then the Hulk will deal with the five health minion. Feels pretty good. And we draw last. We draw last. But that's fine. That wouldn't have changed a thing. So once again, we find ourselves in a position where our health total is pretty low and our opponent has a much higher health total. And so their strategy is to outpressure us. Totems I love. So, some decisions to make here, some choices to make. We can play two Rush Minions, or we can play I wonder. the Death Knight hero. What's better? Maybe developing him here is fine. I mean, am I really going to miss the armor up effect? Hmm. Now, was there a better way to do the trades? And uh, getting offered an 80 gold quest there. Uh, pretty good. Always nice when, um, when friends offer you those quests. Um, I'm closing in on 55,000 gold. Very nearly there. So uh, that 80 gold will go a bit further towards making uh, 55,000 happen. And uh, I keep getting asked this question uh, in the comments on my videos. Uh, you know, why do I have so much gold? I guess I'm like a dragon. I like to hoard gold. Don't want to do anything with it. I just like to hoard it. Okay. Uh, he plays the Lich King. But that's really not going to be enough for him. Um... Double Worgen, with the Keleseth buff, with Spirit of the Rhino, yeah, that's game over. Okay, let's look at one final game here, and it's another Hunter. Okay, so our previous hunter opponent was a mech hunter. Uh, let's see what our opponent has in store for us here. Now I'm going to develop Spirit of the Rhino here. I think it's fine. Um, we have the coin. So I'm actually going to hope that he plays something here on turn two. Just so I can take advantage of coining out the, uh, the Rabid Worgen. I'll show them. I'll show them all. And, and he does oblige us. Now, what secret is that? There's a question. Hmm. So 
So we've used the coin. There's nothing for us to do on turn three. Not sure what he's thinking about here. He's only got three mana. This beast will okay. not be tamed. I guess he's concerned that I may get a value trade into the 2 2. Is that what took so long? So, it's not Freezing Trap. I could have played my Ooze, but I assume he plays a weapon in the deck. My pack will hunt you down. Okay, how am I to Shaw? That needs to die. Um... So we're going card for card with him, and we're maintaining a very slight edge. So far, so good. I'll show them. I'll show them all. Okay. Maybe we could draw Rabbit Wargan here. Nope. Unlucky. In which case, we have to play the weapon. I mean, maybe I should have done that anyway. And then play the town cry. So if we did that, our town crier would be at uh, two health now, not one health. And wow, that is so good for him. Deathstalker Rexar. Here's my board. Wow. Turn six as well. And you see, ladies and gentlemen, that is why the Hulk is so good. It survives Snipe. Yep. And he's masked over it. He's like, what the hell is that card? What's that doing on the board? Who plays that card, he's saying. Now, Deathstalker Rexar is something that could really win in the game. Um... The zombie beast that he discovers, it's infinite value, and it could get to a point where he does outvalue us with that hero power. So getting Rexar on six is such a big deal. No relief. So I'm thinking about whether I want to go face first. No relief. No relief. Okay, it's explosive. It's unfortunate. Choosing to hold back with my weapon here. I'm aware that um, my weapon would be detrimental to the board, to my board, so we're going to hold back. This beast will not be tamed. We've got the potential for some awesome rhino value though next turn, if that's the route that we want to take. Well played. And a good friend of mine named Toasty asking whose deck it is. I've considered it a mission in life now uh, to spread the word about BD Man's decks. Uh, he's such a cool deck creator. He really deserves uh, a bigger outlet than I can provide uh, to showcase his decks. But yeah, we get our Rhino value. Okay, Darius Crowley, 9-9. Nine, nine. That's pretty cool. There you go, Beardy Man. Toasty knows you. You're famous. 
okay. And uh, the explosive sheep confirms it. This is Dewin's deck. Uh, this is the deck that I showcased on my channel recently. Um, play dead, explosive sheep, really awesome in terms of clearing board. So yeah, this is uh, going to be an interesting final few turns to this game. Because either he will outvalue me with that hero power, and I won't be able to recover. Or, I'll be able to build up enough of a board presence where I can just go place and kill him. And 13 attack is going to help with that plan. i curious to see how he deals with this. Um... Starting off by building a beast, always very helpful. Maybe a rush poisonous beast is what he's looking for. Okay, potential for charge, and of course, he wins the joust. So that is 13 damage that we could not do to his face there. Feels really bad. Unity, okay, the plan now is just to develop on board. Compared to some of the beasts that he could generate, this four attack Corcoran Elite, the three attack Zilliax, they're going to seem small in comparison, perhaps. Okay, we kept the ooze. The question is, do we ooze that way? Is there another weapon? Does he have eagle horn though? Okay, five five with stealth. At least it doesn't have rush. That's that's good. Um, I think we play the ooze here. I think it's fine. It gets a 3-3 on that. I think that's what's pertinent. Now, we've set up Spirit of the Rhino. So, that ahead, if it comes down, will we'll be immune. The question is, how much of this board can he deal with? There's the question. That 5-5 five five can only deal with one minion. Does he have anything else in hand? Wow. That is so good for him. Because I assume that is actually going to clean up the majority of my board. Wow. Just wow. Be interested to see if he reveals the 5 5. Knowing that I could get a rush mini in the immune. Because he can't kill Spirit of the Rhino this turn. Yeah, he has revealed it. Uh, it's Gromash. Okay. So now, we have to think about utilising the 10 attack from Gromash. So we have the Death Rattle from our weapon. Uh, Lifesteal minion? It's really awkward. But how much damage is this? Five on board, ten from the Gromash. Two from my weapon, that is precise lethal. Wow. Yeah, and uh, clearly toasty. Very impressed there. Wow. Now, had that game gone on for too much longer, I think we would have run out of threats to play and his hero power would have outvalued us. So Gromash coming to our rescue there. 
So, Beardy Man's Hulk Gone Wild Rush Warrior deck. You've seen me progress through rank 2 with this deck, so it clearly works on the ladder. Um, it has good matches against, I think, other aggressive decks. If you can match them minion for minion early, make favourable trades with your rush minions, build up a board and then kill them. Uh, against control decks, I think it can be a little bit of a problem, uh, particularly against Big Priest. And there were two games against Big Priest that I did not showcase in this video. Basically, uh, they had Barnes on 4, they had, they had Vargoth, they had a multitude of resurrection effects, and there was nothing I could do. And at one point, Brawl was helpful at clearing the board, they just resurrected a whole load of minions, and I was sad. So, Big Priest is an issue. So, if you're going up against... Um, lots of Big Priests, this deck isn't going to work for you. But, as I said earlier, and as you've seen in this video, there are other matchups that are very, very good for you with this deck. And I'm going to ask Beardy Man to leave a comment in the comments section of this video with uh, a very brief sort of guide telling us what the strengths of the deck are, what the weaknesses are, and um, maybe what we should be mulliganing for. So for those of you that are interested in playing this deck and crafting the cards and investing your time in it, you'll have some guidance from the expert beardy man uh, which hopefully can help you so thank you very much for joining me everyone i hope you enjoyed the video um hopefully by the time i publish my next video this bloody cold will have gone um and i'll have got more of my voice back i don't know if you guys were able to spot it in this video but um i did sneeze a number of times and had to edit the sneezes out of the video uh which is very time consuming and annoying um so yes uh hopefully the cold will go and we can go back to normal i'll be going on holiday for a few days next week so um it could be a couple of weeks until the next video so i do apologize uh for the wait um but It'll give you a chance to uh, re-energise, recharge my batteries, and then I'll be back better than ever, perhaps playing another Beardy Man deck, who knows. Uh, so until then, take care everyone, and as always, thank you so very much for your support, it really is appreciated, and I'll see you all again very soon for more Wild Mode Fun.